understand what citizenship is? What is citizenship? They mentioned three things here. Keeping the law, abiding means keeping the law, yes. What else? Protecting the environment, yes, and? The last one? Help your community, okay? So, we often talk about those things we're going to talk about later. Governance, to make sure you're following the law. Right? We can have good governance. We need the environment. And we need to think about society, social factors, or the community. Local community. So, we can see here that one way that we can show that we're helping the community is to create a self-policing body. Do you understand self-policing body? Self-policing body is we are watching our own industry. Okay, so the, we make a, a body in our own industry to police. Policing means watching or checking. So they made one here called the uh, API, but this API is American Petroleum Institute, but it says here, let's read a uh, paragraph on the top, this paragraph here, the final report, uh, so Song Mi Jin, you read here from the final report. The final report states, APIs <coughs> as an industry lobbies to end policy of pocket, which um, established the record of opposing opposing reform and modernization of safety regulations. Lenders it inappropriate to solve or self policing function. In the aftermath of the deep water uh, horizon, tragedy. Tragedy. The commission, commission strong, strongly believes that the oil and gas industry cannot pursue the American public that is that it is changing business as usual. Usual practice if it attempts to fund a more expected public over 
website by charging as a policing function under the control of um, a costing organization. Okay, so is the API doing a good job of checking the safety or not? According to this paragraph. Is the API doing a good job of checking about safety and policing or not? What do you think? Yes, doing a good job or no, not doing a good job? No, right? It says here that it's opposing. Do you understand opposing? Opposing reform means it's against the reform and modernization of safety procedures. Why? Because it costs more money. Okay? Safety, making very safe procedure for the oil and gas industry is going to cost a lot of money. So actually that organization, American Petroleum Institute, that BP is a member of, on the other hand, instead of making policing and making safer, it's lobbying the politicians to stop the regulations. Okay, so it needs to spend less money. Lobbying has a different meaning in Korean, right? Lobby is Konglish. Maybe in Korean, lobby means like illegal activity, giving money to politicians. But in English, lobbying means just uh, in Washington, there are a lot of lobbying organizations. Okay? They try to meet the politicians for lunch or wait for them outside their office or try to meet them around the building to talk to them, right? And to tell them. Lobbying is a big business in the US. Companies spend a lot of money on lobbying. So if lobbying was not effective, if lobbying didn't work, companies wouldn't spend so much money. And a lot of organizations like this, they have office in Washington, right next to the House of Representatives and the Senate in the US. They have the office, lobbying office. Okay, and they try to meet politicians and talk to them and persuade them to do things. So in this case, the API lobbies against reform and modern modernization. Okay? So in this case, the self-policing body might not work well. Okay? So it seems that BP is not doing that well on the citizenship virtue. Okay, then let's look at the next one, respect. So let's read the first paragraph <coughs> of respect. So, uh, Moon Ju Wan, can you read the first paragraph of respect? By respect, the philosophy of the Manuel Party interpreted respect to me, treating people as a man and never really using people as a means. Who can't what matter was whether one section will not be motivated by respect for others, which he regarded as a basic moral duty. So we talked about Kant in the class before, okay? So here we see the phrase that we use people as uh, an end and we don't use people as a means, okay? So for example, I want to just get some money, okay? So you're in my way, so I just uh, say some bad thing about you, so you can get fired and I can get promotion and more money. Okay? Then I'm using you as a means. Means is, you're a way for me to get a promotion. Okay? I'm just using you to get a promotion. So Kant says we shouldn't use people as a means to an end. An end means I have a goal. My goal is get a promotion. Okay? And the what means means the way. The way I can get a promotion is spreading some rumor about her. Okay? So, do you understand rumor? So I shouldn't do that. I should use people as an end. Just respect all the people. So we already talked about Kant and dignity and respect. So we're going to look at uh, BP. Okay. Uh, so problem with BP is putting profit before people. In Ireland they have a new political party. It's called People Before Profit. PBP, people Before Profit. Okay. Because in the financial crisis they thought in Ireland, the government and the companies were putting the profit before the people. So they started a new party. So putting profit before people can be using people as the means to the end. 
So here's a, phrase, an, uh, a quote from an offshore veteran. Do you understand veteran? Veteran is somebody who worked before and doesn't work anymore there. So we use veterans for the military. Military veteran used to be in the military, but not anymore. So here we have offshore veteran used to work offshore. He said, if you got hurt, they just pushed you aside and put somebody else in. So when you were working on the offshore oil rig, you got some injury. They didn't care about the safety or about the person that much. They just said, okay, then you, you finish and just get somebody else. Uh, we can see examples here. The drilling vessels were contracted on day rates, which means that there was time pressure. Okay, so instead of uh, giving them a longer term contract, they were just contracted on the day, so they have to work quickly and finish quickly. Okay, uh, there was always trying to make faster to save money. So not really respecting the workers. The next one is fairness. Fairness or justice, we already talked about this one. So we can see that uh, BP made a 20 billion fund to pay for the disaster. Okay, but already at the time of writing the article, they already had to pay about 40 billion. It's not clear whether it's fair or not, but BP has revenues of 240 billion a year. So BP perhaps not being very fair to the small businesses like the restaurants damaged, right? Their business was damaged, so BP has to pay them some money. Are they paying enough money? Maybe not. Okay. So we looked at the BP as a poor example of how to manage uh, in a crisis, right? We saw that they didn't have this, these kind of virtues like trustworthiness and responsibility and caring, citizenship or respect. Okay. So this article is letting us know about how we should get ready for the crisis, and it's similar to a little bit similar to what we studied about creating just generally ethics company, setting up the company for ethics. So it helps us to review what we studied and also a little bit specific to a crisis. So what we studied in the class was we, when we're making the ethics program, we need to make the vision statement and mission statement and documentation, establish the ethical values, then we need to implement the program, like change the systems or the processes, and finally we need to give leadership. So this article has the same setup. So, the first one is to establish the uh, ethical values. So we can look at the page 41. Okay. So let's read the first paragraph. So, John uh, Jin, can you read the first paragraph of establish the core values? Number one, establish core ethical values. On page 41. So, do you agree with that? Do you think they are good character traits for ethics, those five ones? Do you agree? You made your own, a few weeks ago, you made your own values for your own company, right? You came up with character traits you wanted for your company. Do you think those five are good or not? Good character traits for the company or not? Good. Good, yes. What about the ethics guy, his, char his character traits? Who do you prefer, these five or the ethics guy five? Ethics guy. You prefer it because he smiles and he looks more. <laughs> he looks nicer. <laughs> you 
those articles. <coughs> okay, so let, uh, can you continue on the next paragraph, John Hee Jin? Can you continue read the next paragraph? Whatever your problem is, they should be present and stated upfront in your firm's code of ethics. They should also be included in your annual report, public accountability statement, and or social responsibility report, and should be indicated as clearly as possible on the home page of your corporate website. Okay, so we need to put these values in the documents. That's the point here. Okay, then we can look at the top of the page. There's a quote here. It says, through the CEO, your firm must emphasize when there is a conflict between your values and the bottom line. Do you understand bottom line? What do they mean when they say bottom line? What are, what are, what are they talking about? Bottom line. What do they mean? Well, this is the bottom line. In the financial statement, we have the bottom line is profit. The last one is net profit. Okay? So the bottom line in English means profits. So when there is a conflict between your values and profits, the values must take priority. Okay? So the CO must emphasize that too. So we can see the example. Uh, Sadhu, not here. Uh, Francesca, can you read the example? For example, in Scotia Bank, you don't have the article on the case you can. Uh, in Song Gok, can you read? For example, CEO, that their values have to be more important than the profits. You can sit next to her, right? You can share. Okay, and you can sit up there and it's next to her. You can see that. There. You can't see, you need to sit next to somebody. One can sit over there next to her. Okay, so we can see the example here of Ford Pinto. They give the example we already looked at of Ford Pinto. They also had this example in the other book. Okay? Uh, where Ford Pinto put the profits before the values, before the safety. Okay? And they had bad uh, results. Okay. Uh, then let's look at the number two. Implement a comprehensive ethics program. So uh, let's read the first paragraph of the number two. So, Yi uh, Chi Once you have agreed upon a set of core ethics value and develop your code of ethics, then you need to engage in some ethics training for all employees and managers. Continue. You will need to um, designate an ethic officer or some person responsible for the code of ethics who has direct access to the board of directors in addition. There must be some repointing channels in place via which concern can be without fear or any 
reprisal. Reprisal. So we talked about we need to set up the processes and systems, and they give the obvious example of the system here. Very easy example of the system, which is confidential hotline. Here they say reporting channel. Okay. So we can tell about any problem in confidentiality and anon anonymously. Do you understand the hotline? Hotline. Hotline means it's a number, just a number. Everybody knows the number. And then you can call the number, you don't have to say who you are, and you can report the problem. And then this is linked to the board of directors. The board of directors can find out about the problem. Okay? So, otherwise the employee might not feel comfortable. They might feel if I tell my boss and they tell their boss, then I can get into trouble. So, uh, let's look at the example here. Uh, so, we have the, do you know Siemens? Siemens, German company, big global company. You don't know Siemens? Hmm? What's bad? Why are you saying bad? Hmm? Beds? Mattress? Ah, I think that's different. Siemens? I'm not sure. Siemens is a massive global company from Germany. Siemens Korea. They're also in Korea, right? They do a lot of different things. Very diversified company. They make a lot of manufacturing things and healthcare and insurance and all those products. So anyway, Siemens is a German company. Do we expect a German company to be paying bribes and be corrupt? We look at Transparency International. Usually, are Germany low score for corruption or high score for corruption? Low score, right? But the problem is, we saw before that co companies from countries with low score for corruption, even Sweden and Norway, when they go to another country, their workers may start to pay bribes, right? They're not perfect. So we can see that they have a problem in Siemens here. So let's read about the problem. So, uh, Pak Yu John, can you read in May 2012? Oh, uh, Chan Du, can you read in May 2012? Amnesty means, do you know Amnesty International? You don't know Amnesty International, NGO? Amnesty means that if you're honest and you say that you did it, then you're not going to get punished. Okay, so let's say you're cheating in the test and I say you have some amnesty. Okay, you tell me, you be honest and tell me, oh, I was cheating, then you don't get punished, right? But you don't tell me, and then you get punished, big punishment. Do you understand? And you're going to help me to find out who was cheating. And you tell me, she was cheating. Right? And you get no punishment for you. You're a good girl. And you did a bad thing by cheating. But now you're honest. Right? 
you have amnesty. Amnesty means I won't punish you. Okay, but you cheated and you didn't admit it. So you're going to get some punishment. Okay? So that's the system. So that's like a program or a process that Siemens has for weeding out. Do you understand weeding? Weeding, pulling up the weeds, the bad plants. Okay, so for getting rid of the bad employees who've taken corruption, they made a process where they offered amnesty and asked the other workers in the company to help them to stop that problem. Okay, that's, so that's just an example. So let's look at the last one then, giving ethical leadership. So, Trey uh, Jin Young, can you read the first paragraph there? Um, <coughs> this is potentially the most critical element of an effective ethical corporate culture. The starting principle must be not to let short-term personal financial gain, uh, financial gain. Otherwise, no as great outweigh consideration of the potential negative impact on the on the people on other people. Ready to continue? Unfortunately, in too many companies, the narrow pursuit of profit and fat bonus bonuses has prevented many leaders leaders from setting the right ethical tone at the top. Word comes for Bernie. Bernie Evers. Bernie Evers and Aaron Kennedy Ray and Jeffrey Skilling are obvious examples. Okay, so we saw that case of Enron that Jeffrey Day and Kenneth uh, Jeffrey Skilling and Kenneth Day weren't very good examples of leaders, right? So let's look at page 42 again. We have this figure one, which is signs of leadership failure. We talked about how we need to be a good leader in the class before. Okay? And we have different types of leaders. But this is like wrong type of leader, failure of leader, leader. So let's look at each one in turn. So the first one is symptom is lack of vision. So they don't see the ethical issue or they don't understand the the uh, ethical issue. So we need to improve antidote. In medicine we have symptom and antidote. Antidote is like cure, helping you not to get the problem. So we have to raise our moral awareness. Okay. Number two, problem of leadership is keeping quiet. Even though we have the ethical value and we know that that's wrong, we don't say anything. Okay. So we have to learn to be more assertive, to communicate our ideas and our values to other people. Next problem with leadership is incoherence. Okay. Incoherence is not behaving clearly. Okay, so just changing or not following things properly. Next one is inaction, like keeping quiet, not even though you know what's the right thing to do, you don't do anything. Okay. Uh, so the next problem is hypocrisy. Are you a hypocrite? Hmm? Are you a hypocrite? Don't know the meaning? Hypocrites are people who say one thing and do another thing. Do you know anybody who is a hypocrite? What? So, for example, she tells you, why don't you study hard for the test tonight? Right? You're not studying hard for the test. And then she goes out and drinks a lot of soju with her friends. She <laughs> doesn't study the next day. Right? And she's a hypocrite. Do you understand? She says one thing, she says that the students should study the night before the test very hard, but she was out drinking soju. Is that true? <laughs> Do you go out drinking soju before the test? After the test? Well, kill your brain cells. Drinking too much. Right? So that's, uh, some leaders are hypocrites. They tell the people, Right? Oh, you should be honest, and blah, 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 but then the CEO is not honest, right? That's not a good leader. Double standards is similar to hypocrite. You have a different set of values for other people than for yourself. And complacency. Uh, complacency think is thinking, oh, I'm great. I'm really an ethical person, right? 
just thinking that you're really ethical and really great, but actually you're not. Okay, so you need to be humble and appreciate that you can uh, improve, always, everybody can improve. Okay? So we have to avoid those things, failures, to try and give the correct leadership. <clears throat> so then, uh, these are the principles of dealing with the crisis. So first of all, be honest and transparent with the information. Secondly, remain visible. Uh, we said that the CEO of BP went away on his yacht for a holiday in the problem. Don't do that, okay? Take responsibility if you're at fault and apologize. Don't try to blame the other people. Did you ever try to blame anybody when it was your fault? Blame somebody else? Do you play team sports? Hmm? Do you play any team sports? Boys, do you play soccer? Or baseball? What do you play, soccer or baseball? Soccer. Soccer? Yeah. Usually when I was younger, I made a bad pass back to the goalkeeper, and then the goalkeeper didn't come out quickly and they scored a goal. <laughs> then I was blamed the goalkeeper, right? <laughs> oh, that was your fault. Why didn't you come out? Why didn't you come out quickly? You should be ready. Okay? Well, nowadays I don't do that anymore, right? So we shouldn't blame the other people when we make a mistake. Okay, we have to accept the responsibility ourselves. Okay? So you said you play soccer. Do you blame the other players playing soccer? Do you blame yourself? Accept responsibility? Blame yourself. Good. On our soccer team there's one guy, he's not going to watch the video, right? He always blame the other players. He does a bad pass, he always says, why didn't you get the ball, or that kind of thing, right? So, we shouldn't have that kind of personality, okay? In the, maybe you can do that at home if you want, but not in the business, not when you're dealing with the crisis, okay? But we have to be careful with apologizing. Only if it's our fault, we apologize. If we apologize and it's not our fault, then people will think it's our fault. So we have to be careful with apologizing. Just when it's our fault, we apologize. So just by the way, if you are preparing your CV for getting a job, right? you play team sports, you should write that down on your CV. Because playing the team sport can lead, teach you things like leadership and this kind of thing, accepting the fault or accepting the blame. Right? So. You can also say in the interview, right? You played a team sport, so you learned the good communication skill. So then another step is take, try to fix the problem and stop it from happening. Demonstrate sensitivity to the people harmed. During the crisis of the BP, one of their uh, top staff said to the media, oh, we have to help the little people. So he talked about the restaurant owners, like little people. Do you understand little people? Little people means in English like they're not they're not powerful, they're kind of poor, right? Or they're not important. They're not important people. They're just running a restaurant on the beach, right? So he called them little people. So people was very angry, right? Like he thinks that he's much better than them. Okay? So that's not sensitive. So we should be sensitive to the people harmed. We have to think about the environment and the community. Think about all the stakeholders and make the fair compensation. So these are the steps we should follow when we have a crisis. Okay, so uh, everything done, to sum up, everything done by the company and communicated to the stakeholders should be based on core ethical values like trustworthiness, responsibility, respect, fairness. Okay? Excessive reliance on profit before people has led to a lot of crises for companies. For example, BP and Nike, right? Thinking of the profit and making the problem with the child labor. So we saw with Johnson & Johnson that it can, if we have a crisis, it can also be an opportunity for our company to show that we are very responsible and good company. In the end, <coughs> the crisis might not be, might not be our fault. 
So let's discuss these questions with our partner. Breaches means breaking or breaking the law. Yes. 
they put the profit before, right? So the example is, they didn't put the safety device, okay? They could have spent money to install the safety device, but they didn't install the safety device. So that was putting the profit before people. Okay, so that's one example. Two more examples. One Yemen, two more examples, that's one example. enough money to pay the people, so that was unfair. Okay, another mistake. Okay, so they, they were lobbying the government to against reform and safety. Okay, they were lobbying against the reform and modernization. That's another mistake. Okay, so then the last question. Uh, in Sharia. Yes. Okay, can you hear her? Can you speak more loudly? You can use the microphone if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
how to deal with the ethical crisis, or how to manage a crisis ethically. So as you can see, it's similar. Again, we need to create the correct culture. We need to create the correct culture in the organization by establishing the values, putting the right processes and systems in place, and giving the leadership. Okay? And then acting according to the virtues okay? that we made here, the values or virtues that we made. Act according to this. Okay? So let's finish there then.